Otherwise with Nancy Richards. Thanks very much, Asanda. Nice to uh, hear your voice. And it's nice to be back. And thanks very much to Kim Winter for standing in for uh, for me yesterday. Well, talking of Kim Winter, she is on the other side. She's a produ- producer for today as well as uh, Tabiso Goniwe. And what it, we're talking about, uh, talking women here on Otherwise today, it's Wednesday and it's our help desk. And the question which we are opening to you is, a woman president, are we ready? Well, we'll be getting comment from the ANC Women's League, Treasurer General and Professor Klingiwe Makize. She's also Deputy Minister for Economic Development. And from the Director of the Centre for Citizenship and Democracy, Professor Lisa Thompson. And also from Gender Links, we'll be talking to Partnerships Manager, Loveness Jambaya Naya Kujara. We'll also have a comment from Dr. Mampella Rampele on the subject. And of course, if you've got thoughts, that's what we really want to hear because, hey, this is your program, especially if you are a woman, we want to hear your thoughts. And the number to call us on is 0892 10 2010, 0892 10 2010. What's news? Well, interesting news. We're going to focus, stay focusing on women and uh, leadership. Interesting piece here from a review by Mary Bear of a book called The End of Men and the Rise of Women by Hannah Rosen. And Beard says, the myth of matriarchy is one of patriarchy's oldest inventions. Those stories of primitive warrior queens, buxom mother goddesses and tribes of Amazons are no evidence at all that women did once rule the world. As most anthropologists have recognized for decades, these are cautionary tales invented by men to justify their own dominance. The important point about matriarchy in most of these myths is that the women rulers made a terrible mess of things or they imposed regimes of such terror that there was no choice but to overthrow them. And that, according to the logic of the stories, is why we now have patriarchy. Well, there's an interesting something for you to think about. That was uh, a book called The End of Men and the Rise of Women. And uh, just something to say there. Well, we have in the studio a spokesperson for the ANC Women's League. We have Professor Klingiwe Mkize, so we're going to let her say her thing. But I'm just quoting from uh, the piece that was put out by the ANC Women's League, who said, We will not nominate a woman for president just for the sake of nomination. We say the time is not right, not because we don't have capable leaders, but that the League needs to assist in healing and unifying the organisation. We'll be hearing more about the ANC Women's League's take in just a minute. Gender Commission has said that it was disappointed with the stance of the Mpumalanga ANC Women's League. And just to let you know, a list of women president heads of state from across the world starting back in the 1950s included uh, Mongolia, in the 70s Argentina, in the 90s San Marino, Sri Lanka, Latvia, Panama, all had themselves women heads of state. Uh, In the 2000s, Finland, San Marino again, Philippines, India, Gabon, Lithuania, Switzerland, Costa Rica, have to tell you the list is very long, Mm. Brazil, Kosovo, Liberia, Mauritius, Serbia and Malawi amongst many others. And our Facebook page elicited some very interesting thoughts, Uh, just a a couple that we have here from Zamani, a woman president in our lifetime. Stevie Godson says, as long as it's someone with the ethics and courage of our public protector, we're more than ready. Kea Bontlebame says, we are definitely ready. Is this even the question to ask? Women are born leaders. Consider all the leaders that were brought up by women. Need I remind anyone that uh, Dr. Nkosazana Tlamini Zuma and Dr. Mampela Rampele are women? The question is not whether or not we are ready, but who do we nominate? Kathy says, someone such as Tuli Madonsela would get my vote. Sally uh, says, no time like the present. And Stephanie says, Cheryl Carroll is for president. She would whip this lot into shape. And then <laughs> thereafter followed some interesting exchange between Kathy and Stephanie. Um, a debate about whether or not politics was a dirty game and uh, how good a job a person needs to do uh, as, a, as a leader, as a president. Um, and uh, much talk about the game of politics. And uh, Stephanie says it is because politics involves dirty games such as deception, deception, manipulation, secrecy and outright violence that we need a female president who gets the job done rather than, and then Seymour, don't have time for all of this. But uh, And then from Cathy, she says, any leader must be able to influence people around them and draw loyalty. Without that skill, all the integrity and on-the-job capability is useless. Good or bad, a country leader must be skilled in the art of politics. Lots of ideas, lots of thoughts that uh, each and every one of them sort of in a way requires their own program. But the question very simply we are asking right now is, a woman president, are we ready? And let us know what you think. The number to call us on is 0892 10 2010, 0892 10 2010. Otherwise, on SAFM. 
Well, first up here on Otherwise, I have to say that it was the comment from the ANC Women's League that prompted this discussion. Let me own up with that right away. Uh, as a result of their quote, uh, as a result uh, of their, and I quote, throwing their weight behind President Jacob Zuma's bid for a second term and quoted as having said that they were not prepared to have a female president or as has also been reported that the country was not prepared to have a female president. Well, we have in the studio Professor Klingewe Mekize very much with the Treasurer General of the ANC Women's League, also Deputy Minister for Economic Development. Professor Mekize, how nice to have you with us and here you are to give us direct from the League itself the, the, the feeling. Are we ready for a female president? Is the country ready? Are you ready? Are we ready? What's your feeling? Oh, hi, Nancy. Thank you for having us. We're just going to ask you to wait one second. I think it's a wrong... Sorry about that. Just need to get our mic in order. Yes, absolutely. Professor McKeithay, once again. Oh, uh, hi, Nancy. Thank you very much for having us. I think this debate is very, very important for the country, especially in terms of where we are today, where we come from. Um, the ANC Women's League, as you know, uh, members are first uh, members of the African National Congress, and then they join the ANC Women's League. I think as far back as 1913, when the African National Congress was formed, uh, women began to emerge who showed tremendous leadership. We often refer to women like Charlotte Matlake and many others who came after that, who provided leadership on strategic issues and, and really uh, made gains for women and took the country forward in terms of transforming the, the country. As of today, it, 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 for us as the ANC Women's League, I must say we've gone through a vigorous discussion with women from the provinces. And clearly, there's no doubt in our minds that uh, amongst people who have been Grow, uh, who have developed within the African National Congress, who are members of the ANC Women's League, some who are not members. There are quite a number of women who are ready to provide leadership at this point in time. I think what triggered off uh, the controversy is maybe the utterance uh, by one of our women uh, from the province that uh, women are not ready. The official meeting of the African ANC Women's League had clearly said, had looked at the position of the organization as of today, coming from the previous conference, Polukwane, a conference five years ago where there were serious divisions and said, look, since the constitution uh, allows you know, the leadership to serve for two terms, why don't we uh, play a role of being peacemakers by allowing the current leadership to serve for two terms? Uh, because con stability is important, you know, as for women, women don't thrive where, where there are conflicts and uh, threats of some kind. So that that's the position. That's what led uh, the proposal which was put forward by the ANC Women's League. But of course, knowing very well that uh, the processes have just started at a local level and women know very well that uh, they could, you know, identify other leaders besides that were discussed in the meeting. Uh, we are awaiting the outcomes, but it's not even a question if uh, a number of branches come up with uh, names of women, whether at a level of a president and so on, that person will get 100% support since uh, we stand for the creation of a non-sexist society and for uh, promoting or defending gender equality. 
So with the question, are we ready? Um, there are a number of questions here. You know, are, are we ready? The, uh, is the country ready? Is the Women's League ready? Is the, is the party ready? Are women themselves ready? And I suppose we need to sort of think about which one of the, what readiness. I think we've established that women themselves are ready, as you say yourself, way back when we have had very strong and powerful female leaders. But if you say that we, you're playing the role of peacemaker and that stability is important, is it the, the League's feeling then that to put President Jacob Zuma back in office for another term would give us stability? It, it, it would seem that stability is not what we've got at the moment. Um, by giving him another turn, is that going to make the country any more stable? Um, you see, you know, I think the Women's League is ready. Uh, the ANC should be ready because this is not even our policy, you know, gender equality, non-sexism, those are mm. policies which have defined the ANC over a long period of time. So for us, you know, we, we, we strongly believe that uh, any woman could uh, uh, be given an opportunity. The, you know, the only thing, Nets, which I want to say, which is, you know, we have strong feelings about, we don't want even the ANC Women's League to be under pressure to identify or to ensure that there's a woman president in the country. We, we see that as the responsibility of the ANC itself. We are celebrating the centenary, 100 years of this ANC's existence. All the presidents that we are reflecting upon their lives, their values, their princ uh, principles are men. So we're saying it's in the interest of the ANC as an organization to begin to produce the top leader mm -hmm. as a woman. With respect, um, you opened by saying that the Women's League are, are ANC Women's League are members of the ANC first, and if not you, then who to put forward a woman president? And um, are we waiting for the men of the ANC to put forward a woman? You seem to be the ideal people to put forward a strong woman candidate. Definitely. We take responsibility for mm. campaigning for these issues. That's the reason why the ANC Women's League was formed. But what I was trying to highlight is that these women uh, who are members of the ANC Women's League, sometimes they take... Um, they, 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 they look at the situation within the organization as a whole. Like, for instance, our women in provinces, they would look at what is happening and then they will take a position which will assist to put the organization together. So, but it doesn't mean in their mind they have a doubt that a woman could lead the organization. So it is really uh, maybe a kind of caution which uh, has a lot to do with the state of the organization coming from 2000, the last election, and having this other one saying, let's see how we help the organization to be on its feet again, but not compromising the most important thing that we stand for. Has there been absolute consensus within the Women's League that they are not, that, that as we put it, we, you know, we are not ready to have a woman president. If one were to do a poll amongst every, how many members are there of the Women's League? Do you have that number in your well, head? Well, uh, I don't have a, a number, but remember there are those who are, you see, that, that's another thing. There are ANC women who are not necessarily members of the ANC Women's League. Well, let's focus on the Women's League, given we don't know exactly how many there are. If one were to do a poll uh, amongst them all, is it your feeling that each and every one of them would say, no, we are not ready for a woman oh, president? Oh, definitely they will say we are ready. Mm. As women, that's what they'll say. That's why even with this position, the women were clear that they're ready. You know, even, you know, they were throwing around some names and asking people, why are you not standing? Why are you not raising your hand? Ultimately, the position which was taken, of course, they were, you know, uh, out of the nine provinces, except two, uh, the, the women said, you know, we're in a province where I come from. This is the position, which meant 
uh, seven provinces mm -hmm. out of nine came with a position, which we understand they are members of the PC, of the whole ANC within the province. But definitely, with regard to names of women, women were clear. Mm. They were ready. I'm just wondering if... Um, if we get whomever we get as president, assuming that it's a man uh, for the next term of office, I'm wondering if after the following term of office, if we still don't have stability, will we then be ready for a woman president? And hopefully you'll be here to come and tell us all about it. And we, uh, we'll find out if, we, if we're any readier. We're talking to Professor Lengiwim Kize. She's Deputy Minister for Economic Development, also Treasury General of the ANC Women's League. We're talking about a woman president. Are we ready? If you'd like to give us a call, 0892 10 2010. In a minute, we're going to hear what Dr. Rampele has to say. 0892 10 2010. After this, apply. Otherwise, on SAFM. And here on Otherwise, we're better to ask the question, a woman president, are we ready? We've been talking to uh, Professor Shlingiwe Mkize. She is on, talking on behalf of the ANC Women's League right now. We'll be chatting to her again in just a minute. But we also spoke to Dr. Mampele Rampele, uh, uh, Rampella Rampele, sorry, earlier. And uh, we'll be hearing a little bit more from her in our My Story feature that's this Friday between 1.30 and 2. But when we chatted, I took the opportunity to invite her opinion on the question. And this is what she had to say. I think it's a wrong question because it presupposes that women have something that they must finish before they can be considered for leadership. I think the country needs leadership that is different from what we have historically had. And one of the things that I have benefited from is strong women leaders. My two grandmothers, my great-grandmother, my mother and many of my relatives who were real strong personalities were women. So what's this about? Are uh, we ready? Okay, the country may not be ready even if the women are ready, but I don't believe that the country is not ready. The country has got a constitution that talks about gender equality. So we were ready in 1994 for a woman president. The issue is whether or not we are prepared to go on a journey of radical change in the political culture that will come with a woman who is transformational. I'm not talking about a woman in men's clothes, but a transformational leader who is a woman can really do wonders for this country. Would you be prepared to undertake the role? I am not in the business of being in public political spaces in that sense, I am, in a sense, a leader because my work in mobilizing citizens to become engaged is precisely to make sure that this question, are we ready, becomes a, a non-question. And I don't believe that this country is incapable of producing leaders, men and women, who can do a much better job than we have had done so far in our, in our journey. So my personal position, I have risen to leadership when the challenge is put to me at an appropriate time. But I never go out to seek being a leader. I always seek to be a change agent. Well, there you are. That's a, uh, that's a response from uh, Dr. Mampella Rampere. She uh, had uh, quite a lot to say, and we're going to be hearing a little bit more about what she has to say in terms of her story. Uh, we, in our My Story feature this very Friday, we'll be hearing a little bit more from her. But right now, the question we're asking is, a woman president, are we ready? Uh, Professor Mkise, interesting to hear what Dr. Rampella had to say there. Um, you know, for the sake, going back to the original, the original response from the ANC Women's League, it's not so much, it seems from what you're saying, not so much that women themselves aren't ready or that the country isn't ready or that anybody's not ready. It feels like we are all very ready. But it seems that for the sake of peace and healing, it seems that we could be sacrificing the possibility of having the different leader, the change maker, somebody who's going to bring something to this country. Is that really the feeling? Is, is that it from the Women's League? As I've said, uh, we are open. You know, we we looked at all aspects. So we, the provinces are nominating and so on. But you know, um, Dr. Mampila Rampila raises important aspects of saying we need to get a leader who will be transformational. Mm. 
in orientation, you know, more, you know, by virtue of taking a position of standing for gender equality, that's the position whereby one saying, let's re, let's deconstruct and reconstruct uh, power relations in society. And most women who are in political leadership, they are in those positions not for the love of uh, the TV camera, but because they believe they can make a difference, they bring different values, they see things differently. You know, we, you know, we, you have seen exactly what we want. And that's exactly what we are doing and what we can do. We can do more as well, women. We but certainly can. I, I know that you're going to have to leave us very shortly and we've already got quite a number of callers coming oh, through. Please. Oh, you won't leave. OK, um, well, that's the good news. In that <laughs> case, we but nonetheless, we are going to take one of the callers. We're going to take Nana on the line. Hi, Nana. Good afternoon, Nancy. Um, afternoon, Professor. Oh, hello. Yes, I know this singer very well. She's one of the leaders that the Women's League actually has at the moment. Hmm. And I think it's very important uh, that we listen to what she's saying in terms of the fact that we do have the women, right? But it also takes into consideration the fact that the type of leadership that women bring will be different, and it should be different, just like uh, uh, Dr. Mampella just said, from the type of leadership we actually have right now, so that we see a different type of world that we actually all want to aspire for. What is missing right now is the fact that many women don't want to step into the space because they think getting into that space is about winning only. Sometimes it's just about taking that position and consistently hold on to it until what we believe in actually happens. Because when we sell ourselves by not standing out, it still makes people believe that the type of leadership we have is the only type of leadership that can actually uh, transform this country. And we need much more. And women, all of them know that we need a different type of leadership for this, the world to actually change to where we actually want it to happen. So my, my, my wish here is that I would like to see a women's league that is prepared to stick its net out for a candidate like Ngosa Zanazuma, who may, I'm not saying that she will because the world is very difficult, who may actually bring that type of leadership. The very same Mampelez, the very same Sandy Wales, the one who's sitting in the studio, are in a good position to, to, to speak about the type of leadership that we need now so that people start hearing women differently from the way we've actually heard leadership defined. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Nana. We're going to get a response from that uh, from Professor Mkise just now, who's, who's very kindly agreed to stay on a little bit longer. Thank you very much. You're listening to Otherwise here on SAFM. We're talking about a woman president. Are we ready? If you'd like to give us a call, 0892 10 2010. But right now, it's Otherwise talking, very much talking women. We're talking about a woman president. Are we ready? And the, the we being the royal we, the country, ourselves as individuals. And are men ready? And uh, is the ANC itself ready? Well, we have have on the line Nontlantla from Limpopo. I think she's still with us. Hi, Nontlantla. Are you there? Uh, we might have lost Nontlantla. I think I, I heard the call drop just there. But uh, in the studio with me, I have Professor Tlingi Wimkize. She is a uh, Treasurer General at the ANC Women's League. Also have Professor Lisa Thompson. Thank you very much, Lisa. You've been listening with interest to everything that's uh, been said right here. And uh, Lisa is Director of the African Center for Citizenship and Democracy at UWC. Going to be talking just now to... Um, uh, to Loveness uh, from the gender links, but right now I think, Lisa, let's bring you in. As I say, you've been very, very silent there. Um, do you want to just come a little bit forward and tell us, so far, everything that you've heard, what's your answer to the question, a woman president, are we ready? Well, I think it's very interesting that we, we're talking about the question because we wouldn't be asking this question um, about men in terms of gender categories. We ask this question because women have to justify their representation in democratic terms, and I think that is a very critical aspect to the, the heart of the question. And when we, when we unpack it, if we look at it in analytical terms, we're looking at the acceptability of women as leaders, if we're asking the question of a, a woman being a president based on gender. And the second aspect that we're looking at is, again, women's capacity to affect change and transformation. And I think that's what Mampele Ramfele hinted at um, in her, her, her comment. And this, to me, is perhaps the, 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 the most concerning, that we, we actually ask questions about that capacity after all this time in our 
uh, in terms of our history in South Africa, where we've, we've, especially the ANC, and we have to give the ANC credit for that, have done very well in terms of advancing gender equality and representation mm -hmm. um, across the democratic spectrum. So to be asking the question again as to whether a woman is capable of, of this kind of position, to me, um, is a little bit backtracking in a way. We know that those leaders are out there, as was said earlier. We know that there are strong women who could play that transformatory role. Why not now? Um, and as I mentioned earlier, we did a, a quick vox pop in uh, Kailicha and Lunga in preparation for this program mm. where we asked a number of women leaders as well as men, um, just randomly, ones that we work with a lot as well as just some off the street and in front of spaza shops and so on. And overall, the, the sentiment from those areas were that we are ready for a woman leader and that would be a very good thing, particularly the women who we asked. Interestingly enough, most of the stereotypes around why women shouldn't be leaders, even in the ANC, were around uh, women's um, characteristics or stereotype characteristics about women not being able to stick with decisions, not being able to have sufficient political backbone, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So interestingly, just in terms of looking at those two aspects to why we would ask this question in the first place, those were, I think, quite important responses. But overall as well, one of the things that came out, I think, as a central leitmotif was that most of the women leaders um, that we asked who would be voting ANC anyway re regard the question as one which revolves really around party politics and not about whether women are intrinsically ready to lead as president or not. We know that they are there and there were names mentioned. They were mentioned, many of those names as well. Um, Lima Donzella, um, Mampela Rampela came up. Um, even amongst some of the more educated um, respondents, some mentioned even Helen Zilla, although she was struck off the record for other reasons, <laughs> um, which were leadership ones. They weren't around, um, you know, racial or anything like that. It was how would a woman leader be able to um, be more transformationalist, um, accountable, um, et cetera, et cetera. In other words, evaluating in terms of leadership qualities, the ones that we would like to see um, in going forward at our, this critical juncture in mm. our history. So it's not just the fact of her being a woman, it's the fact of what she's going to do. There would be a huge amount of, um, oh, let's be honest, there would be a huge amount of pressure on her to affect mm. these changes exactly. and put in place all the things that we, um, the Gender Commission and that so many uh, bits of gender machinery have been trying to do to get some sort of equal, uh, equal uh, balance going, um, whether or not she would have the capacity to make change. But it seems that everybody's so ready, it's that final leap of faith. And just mm. before we take uh, Loveness from Gender Links and our caller on the line, um, I just want to come back, Professor McKeese, to what Nana had to say there. It's almost like the women's aid. She's saying the women's aid need to be prepared to stick their neck out. It, we're ready. We have never been readier from all that we hear, really. Uh, is, is the women's aid not prepared to make that final leap of faith and say, yes, okay, we're going to do it? You know, we all know that there are women there. Yeah, I think what Nana is saying is very, very important, mm. that um, uh, all the background work has been done over years not only by current leadership or women who are still alive, but by women who stood up and formed this organization of the ANC Women's League. You know, as she was talking, I was reminded of uh, conversations we used to have with Mabetha. Mabetha Kowa used to say, you know, nobody believed men were worried when we said we were marching to uh, Parliament in 1956 to present a memorandum to the state uh, president then. She said, but we did it because we were determined. Uh, she said that many a times, you know, especially when uh, she was laying a wreath talking about women who had died. So I fully agree that um, it's not, I, we shouldn't expect uh, the patriarchal society to say to us, now you can take power or even uh, men within the organization to say, you know, you really, you ladies, in your black skirts and green blouses, you look wonderful. It's time mm. you become leaders. <laughs> it's up to us to take a stand. Mm. And I think, you know, having certain discussions of the ANC Women's League and listen to what women are saying, and even private conversations, um, definitely that's where women are. Uh, you know, women are ready. Mm. And 
women are ready. We keep hearing it, don't we? Mm. Um, Lisa, I want to come back to you about the women that you spoke to, the, the vox pops of, of the women in Kailicha and Langara. It would be very interesting to hear what their concerns were. Having said that we may or may not be ready, were their concerns? Would they get, would this woman, this mythical woman who's going to do this job, would they get the backing of the women? Do the women themselves have doubts? But we've uh, had a caller waiting for some time from Johannesburg. Hi, Anonymous. Hello. Hi. Hi. Yes, your feeling. Yes, yes, Nancy. Uh, actually, it's very sad news that hundred years after the ANC was born, as women we are still sacrificing ourselves, we are still selling ourselves short. We believe that we are not ready to lead. If we, indeed we were ready, why are we not nominating a female president? What message is it that we are sending to our girl children? Here we are as women in positions of leadership. But still we feel we are not ready. The mere fact that we are not nominating a female president, it means indirectly we are saying we are not ready. Mm. And you know, you're talking to somebody who is an ANC member. And in our branches, we were told that the women have decided to support the president for the second term. So we were not given an opportunity to discuss that, but that's something else. But all that I'm saying, if we are nom not nominating the female president, who is going to do it? Mm -hmm. And what is it that we are saying about ourselves? Thank you. Thank you very much, Anonymous, and thank you for waiting. Uh, if you'd like to give us a call, 0892102010. We have Lovna Jambaya Nia. Nia Kukujara on the line. She's from Genderlink. Hi, Loveness. I apologise for getting your name wrong. Are you with us? Yes, I am. Good afternoon. Lovely to have you. Thank you. And I know that you've been listening to everything. Would you like to give us a, you know, Genderlink's take on this question, on what you've heard so far? Okay. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, yes, I've been listening uh, with interest and reading quite a little bit around it. Uh, I mean, just following the debate, and I believe that Ambassador Chenjue Mkchinso, and of course, um, Ms. Lengiwe, who is in the studio with you, could not have been have put it much better to say that, um, you know, it's the ANC celebrated uh, centenary, and, 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 uh, doc, and, and Ambassador Chenjue actually put an analogy of the clock that they've designed that has 12 uh, presidents and all of them are men, and she makes reference to that uh, at 1 o'clock, it's a man right up to 12 o'clock. And yes, it is food for thought. Does it mean that there haven't been many women at their helm who could be president? I believe there are many women. More importantly, I don't think it's about being ready or not ready. We have women being more than 50% of the population, and so having a woman president is good for democracy. It is the right thing to do. Just because women, you know, form a, a, a majority of the population of citizens in South Africa. But not only that, if you look at the statistics coming out of research, like our study gender protocol barometer we've just released, women are more than 40% of the cabinet of parliament. In, in local government, we actually experienced a slight um, decrease. Where am I leading with this? I'm saying that the numbers are starting to be there. What we need now is more than just women representation. We want qualitative participation. And what better pa qualitative participation by, than raising the bar and getting women at the highest level of decision making in all of the years that South Africa has you know, made remarkable progress around um, you know, making deliberate measures to get women there. And I'm so happy that ANC is one of the parties that has the 50-50 the, the Zebra system, and that you know speaks to to the commitment. But I think that it is time to raise the bar and go that step further to ensure that there is a nomination of a female president. And whose responsibility is it? Of course, it's both the male and the females in the party. But I think it's also incumbent on the females. So I couldn't agree more with all the discussions. And uh, it's quite interesting that we are all in agreement. So the question is, what is the next step? I think that's the pause. I mean, the question I'll yeah. pose to both the party, but all the listeners and everyone else. Yes, indeed. What is the next step? I suppose I'm thinking, can we lobby? Is there, is there some sort of petition? Can something be done for everybody's voices to be hear, heard? Um, I think we are definitely more than 50%. 52%, I think, is a female population. Mm. 0892102010. Thanks, Agnes. Stay with us. Um, we've got another caller on the line, also anonymous. Hi there. 
Hello, ma'am. How are you doing? I'm well, thanks. What's your feeling? Um, I, firstly, I just think that the statement that was made to say that uh, women, uh, they are not ready, it, it is insultive to women. I am a woman, and I feel that statement was, was like, insultive. And uh, your guest speaker has just tried to explain as to um, who made that, like, uh, there was one member who made that statement. But I think that particular member owed us to us as women that he must, she must come out and withdraw that statement because, as it said, many people think that women came out saying that they were not ready for leadership. And another thing, I think that if South Africa can have a woman uh, a leadership, many things can change. Looking at the situation that is happening right now, you can see that the leadership that has been uh, put by Tulima Donzela, the public protector. I think we can, we can make better uh, South Africa if we can put a, a, a woman in leadership. And another thing, things like um, maybe like uh, service delivery for basic uh, uh, like, uh, um, uh, services to the community. We know that women by nature, we are caregivers. All of these things will improve compared to the men's leadership. So the statement to say that we are not ready, maybe the, the ANC Women's League might not say that they are not ready, but us as South African women, as, 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 as South African women, I think we are ready. They, they, they give uh, reasons as to why we are not ready. They will say because of our emotions and all the things that, that, that they say. But I think that if we have women like uh, Tuli Madonzel, I've just quoted uh, Lindy Wasisulu and the lady that is there as your guest speaker, that statement, I think, it, it, it was not right at all, and it must be withdrawn by that particular woman who said that he must say, she must say that as individual, I'm not ready, but not to say that women of South Africa are not ready. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anonymous. Um, yes, the question of, of what the statement actually said, it, it seems to keep coming out differently mm -hmm. every time we refer to it. What I've got here, and I'm quoting the Sowetan, is that the country was not ready for a woman president. Uh, it went, goes on to say, we say the time is not right currently. So the country is not ready. The time is not right. It's sort of kind of passing the buck. Um, Fraser and Kizia, I want to come back to whether or not there's a possibility through the channels of the ANC Women's League for women to lobby, uh, you know, to, to say, to get the voices. I mean, I'm sure that there are many people listening who are not phoning in who, who perhaps feel like you do that maybe it isn't the right time. But it would be interesting to take a, a real consensus. 0892 10 20 10, if you'd like to give us a call. And we've got uh, Sherazad on the line. Hi, Sherazad. Hello, how are you? Well, thanks. What's your feeling? Um, yeah, my point is that we do need a, a drastic change of uh, leadership. Uh, we need a woman, basically because the patriarchal system so far has not worked. Unfortunately, this is a very dysfunctional country in that sense. And um, you, you only got to look at all the violence around the... Uh, Choosing of ANC candidates uh, and, and etc. to see that it's their male, you know, this is because of the male domination in politics. Um, so we need to we need to try and get rid of that situation first and foremost. And then, if you have a woman, they're going to uh, prioritise things that you know are going to be beneficial to the country, um, as opposed to you know the greed that. Many male politicians, unfortunately, seem to have on their mind. So my point is, you know, basically, why is the ANC Women's League stalling if not just to hold on to the power which they have? And I think that's very sad. You know, that seems to be the only reason why they're doing it. Is it your feeling that there is a woman who is ready to do all these things, to, to change this dysfunctional country, as you call it, who's going to prioritise in a better way? Is it your feeling that there is a woman out there? I think the public protector would be a good candidate. I'm sure there are many others who we don't mm. know of, mm. who I don't know of personally. You know, but, but they, yeah, and they've got to be out there. They have to be. They've got to, they've got to be able to do a better job than the people right, who are doing it at right the now. moment. That's obvious. Yeah. 
Thanks very much for your call, Sherazade. 0892 10 2010. We do need a drastic change, she says. Patriarchal system is not working. Lisa, I just want to come back to the question of the women that you spoke to because one needs to know that there's a support from all women. I mean, we're never going to reach all consensus, you know, because mm -hmm. women are equally, every one of them is different. But did you get a feeling that whilst they felt that the women that you spoke to, that the country was ready for a woman president, did you get the feeling that they would be behind such a woman? Definitely. I think the, the, the issue was that the women that, that we spoke to, um, uh, my colleague Pamela went and interviewed, were, were unanimous that a woman uh, president would be better at this particular junction than carrying on as we currently are, or in terms of the current nominations. So I think the question was really about why the party politics around making sure that Jacob Zuma runs for another term, because that seems to be more the issue than the issue of is there another suitable candidate. Mm -hmm. And for me, what was interesting as well is that across um, education, um, uh, class and race lines, the same women leader names came up. I mean, how many times just in this session has Thuli uh, Madhul come up? Mm -hmm. Because she has, she has shown um, that she's up to the job in leadership terms. She may be a woman, but she's, she's a strong leader who can make unpopular decisions even, and, and who can take it in terms of criticism, um, being her, her name being um, drawn into question. Uh, and in that respect, it shows that women and men are, are very good in evaluating what makes a good leader, where, irrespective of whether they are men or women. And yeah. I think that really, for me, is at the heart of the issue. If we Obviously, if we have a women president, we send out a strong signal in terms of gender equality and also in terms of the ability of women to do that type of job. But there's also the aspect of what kind of leadership and transformational role they can bring to bear. And I think that actually is what most people tend to focus on. They tend to, to focus on leaders with women or well, the gender aspect being a secondary thing to their leadership potential. And for me, that's really at the heart of it, more than whether the person is a man or a woman. Maybe the question really should be um, not just who could she be, but mm. how could she be and how could we be behind her and what would... Because a lot is going to be... I mean, from everything we've heard, a lot is expected of her to transform this country. And mm. I think there's a strong feeling that transformation is required. Maybe that's the next question, and maybe that's for another program. Mm. But uh, right now, 0892 10 2010, if you've got thoughts on a woman president, are we ready? Maggie on the line from the Free State. Hi, Maggie. Hi, good day. Can you hear me? Yes, got you loud and clear. Okay, thank you very much for the time. Um, no, I just wanted to make a comment that um, a president can be anyone. It does not have to be a woman or a man. Mm. But in South Africa right now, we need that gender transformation and it needs to be visualized and it, sh it should be a conception that is real. So a female has to be there. Now, the president does not have to be somebody who knows everything about all sorts of things. He doesn't have to know about economics in detail. He doesn't have to know about fertilizers in detail, but he has advisors that will advise him. So whether it's a man or a woman is really irrelevant. But in South Africa right now, we do need to go beyond the patriarchal system and move on and try the matriarchal system. Indeed. Uh, yeah, carry on. No, that's all I have to say. Okay, okay. Do you see anybody? Is there anybody that you, whose name that you would put forward, if I may be so bold to ask? Don't, don't would, if you don't. I, I wouldn't put anybody's name forward mm. as such, but I have identified a lot of uh, females in the ANC particularly that are already in leadership roles and they just need to be put and pushed further into that ultimate role. And they can do the work of any president. Maggie, thank you very much. Thanks very much for your thoughts on that one. We are talking about a woman president. Are we ready? Are you ready? Is the country ready? Are we ready ourselves as women? And if you'd like to give us a call, 0892 10 2010, 0892 10 2010. Um, Professor Mkise, um, gender transformation, it's assumed that by putting a woman uh, in place, there will be gender transformation. I suppose there needs to be some sort of political will. There needs to be from this person, there needs to be the will to make the changes. Would the Women's League agree that changes need to be made? Is there a feeling that transformation and a different kind of leadership is required? Well, definitely. 
you know, we are committed. You know, let me start off by saying, for instance, I won't fully agree with Meg that uh, whether it's a man or woman who is in leadership is irrelevant. I would say to have a woman in a strategic position is symbolic and it's transformative by nature, be it in politics or in a company. Uh, then the next level, of course, will be to say, w what values uh, do that person bring in that position? Uh, commitments or traditions and so on becomes important then to say, what are we going to get out of this position? You know, it takes us back to what we have said, that clearly we, we need to continue doing what we are doing now to create a conducive environment to free, liberate people. I mean, people have come up with good views, but often preferring to be anonymous, this and this, mainly because I don't think people are even confident to say the things they are saying mm. uh, openly. So we, we need to create a build-up uh, so that come next m elections, you know, everybody is ready. The society is ready to talk openly about these issues and to defend whoever will be put forward as a woman. Well, perhaps we look forward, we look to the Women's ANC Women's League to, to do that, to to create the build-up. You're listening to Otherwise here on SAFM. Um, Jolan um, from uh, Johannesburg and Tabo, do stay with us. We'll be getting to you just now. And uh, I think we run, after that, I think we probably run out of time for callers, but we will be talking to Tabo from Randburg as well. So stay with us. You're listening to Otherwise. Otherwise on SAFM. Otherwise, it is. And very briefly, we're going to take our last two callers on the question of a woman president. Are we ready? Jolan from Johannesburg, very, very briefly, please. Thank you. Um, hi there. Just two comments that I wanted to make briefly. Mm. One of your previous callers made it, and I'm so glad she did. I think the point is well made that the ANC Women's League might not be ready. But I don't think they're in any position to be speaking on the rest of the country's behalf. And the other comment I just want to make, in all of these discussions about women leadership, it frustrates me that we seem to accept there's a default position that men should lead. And then we seem to discuss ad nauseum whether we're ready for women as if that is the mm. exception. And I think we need to move the dialogue beyond the default which accepts that men, no matter what their mistakes or their errors or their shortcomings are, the default. And yet women need to rise to some level of exceptional um, goddess-like status before we actually accept them into leadership positions. And we need to move beyond that. Yes, absolutely. And not just in presidential roles, but uh, right across the board. You're so right. Thanks very much for for that. Uh, Tabo, very briefly on the line from Randberg, your question, your your thoughts? Thank you. A quick one. Firstly, hmm. I believe um, women are ready to lead. Um, however, I just want an answer on a quick question from your guest there. Hmm. The policy of 50-50 inside the African National Congress would the African National Congress Women's League be willing to take that policy further at Mangawung to mean a rotation, for example, in the terms of the presidency between male and female? Thank you. I will listen on the radio. Okay. Professor Mkise, what would your take be on that? Well, that's an interesting view because we had um, we presented on 50-50 coming from um, a point whereby women were usually you know, 50-50 uh, was uh, calculated looking at the number of women in total. But we then said, no, let's look at a zebra principle. And I suppose it's an interesting view which we'll have to consider the issue of a rotation. Or other people might say in terms of our numbers, we don't even need to say that. Uh, I suspect this conversation is only just the beginning and it's going to go on and on and on until we get a woman in that position, presumably. If anybody would like to take the debate further, can they find out more? Can they be in touch via the ANC website? We'll really appreciate that, especially as we move towards a major national policy conference to get as many views as possible from the ANC website. Then there's a link. Uh, taking people to the okay. ANC Women's League. So that would be www.anc.gov.za. Thank you so much, Professor Ashlingi Kize. And don't forget, if you'd like to let us know, you can uh, pop us an email, otherwise at safm.co.za. Better on our Facebook page, otherwise on SAFM. Lisa, thank you very much. I love this. Thank you very much. I'm sorry we didn't get back to you, but thank you so much for your input. Thank and you. I'm going to uh, put out the GenderLinks website because I suspect that people may be able to make their voices heard on that as well.
Yes, they can. Lovely. Thank you. Yes. Loveless right. Jambaya Naya Kujara. www.genderlinks.org.za. Professor Lisa Thompson, thank you very much. Uh, I've no doubt we'll hear from you again. I feel that there is perhaps more to say. That would be great, yes. There's a lot more to say. Super. Thank you very mm -hmm. much for joining us. Professor Lisa Thompson, Director of the African Centre for Citizenship and Democracy at the University of the Western Cape. Thanks very much to the team, Tavi Sogoniwe, Kim Winter. I'm Nancy Richards. And up next is uh, Afternoon Talk with Ashraf Garda, but right now. We'll 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 talk with Ashraf